What's going on guys, Alex with 814 EDC, and today I'm ready to do an overview slash kind of full review on the Kvist variant PE2 um, by Kvist Bladeworks. So I did not do an unboxing of this knife because I got it in on a weekend that I went to Pittsburgh and I knew that I wouldn't have had time to do an unboxing. Um, I also got a knife in the, uh, well, I'll leave it for the next video that I'm doing a review on that I also didn't unbox. So um, I apologize about that, but I have had the um, PE2 in for about a week, a little over a week, and uh, I need to get it sent out to the next person. And I've, you know, had my, had enough time with it because I, you know, have the variant one. So I'm very familiar with the knife uh, to give you guys a good, you know, sort of rundown and stuff like that. So um, that's today's video. But yeah, this is the PE2 or the PEZ, I think Jacob is calling it. But um, if you guys are not familiar with uh, Jacob Lundquist and Chris Bladeworks, he is the, so Jacob is a custom um, maker of knives and he wanted to turn his custom design into a, a production version. So he came out with the production version. Um, he did a Kickstarter and I got in on the original Kickstarter. I think it was last, I think it, the Kickstarter I got in on it was like end of last summer and then our middle was last summer, I think. And then the knife didn't come until uh, late October, early November, somewhere in there. Um, they were made by QSP. And this is my custom, or not my custom, but this is my variant PE. Uh, it's rocking some really cool Arctic, or uh, White Storm Fat Carbon Scales. Not Arctic, sorry. Um, these were also made by Jacob. He did some Fat Carbon Scales, some Micarta Scales and some G10 scales, and he would do uh, like drops like once a week, and I was able to land this, so this, or these scales, excuse me. Uh, so this is my personal one. Absolutely love this knife um, for, for budget. It's just fantastic. You guys have seen my, uh, you know, unboxing and full review of this knife. If you haven't, uh, go check it out, but really, really cool knife. I really, you know, have nothing but great things to say about it, and it's probably one of my favorite knives in the collection, so. But that is to say that I did not get a pre-order spot for the PE2. I know I really thought about it. I really was close to it, but I just held off because, you know, I wanted to put that money towards something different, something else. And there's only a few changes that have happened from the original PE to the PE2. Uh, and while they are good changes, I just, I didn't feel that they were, you know, I wasn't drawn enough to it that I was like, I need to have that. Um, and that's not to say that I don't, you know, really want to support Jacob and stuff like that because I, I absolutely love this knife guys. I just, you know, it was one of those things where I had some other stuff I had on my, you know, on my plate, on my mind, um, on my wish list that, you know, kind of got the funds over this, but I really do, you know, enjoy this knife and I enjoy the platform and I think Jacob has a fantastic design. So, uh, without further ado, we're just going to, you know, try to go through my normal review here. Um, so jumping right into it, the materials, this is rocking titanium, which is really cool to see. One of the uh, biggest upgrades was he extended the jumping here for a front flipper, which is awesome. And then the other, um, you know, major, uh, upgrade was he added more lock bar access which I saw a lot of people were, you know, kind of nitpicking and kind of complaining about with theirs. That was one of the biggest issues I saw. Um, you also, you know, get the standard QSP deep carry clip. Um, the liners are nested into the scales, but there is no internal milling, which kind of sucks because this knife is a little bit heavy. That was like my first, you know, once I picked, uh, took it out of the packaging and kind of held it, I was like, man, this thing is, you know, heavier than I thought it would be. Uh, so that's one kind of negative thing I guess I have going for it. Probably the only negative thing, if I'm being honest. But, uh, you know, same 14C28N right there. Nice flat grind. Just a beautiful blade shape. Very usable. It's a worn cliff. Comes down to a nice thin edge. Uh, and this one is stone washed, where the um, original, or mine, is uh, satin. So he changed that up. Uh, and the other variants, or the other... Um, yeah, I guess variants of the variant PE2. So they had the titanium and the stonewash and the DLC. And then they also had a like blue denim micarta with uh, stonewash and blue or uh, uh, full DLC. So there's two different options. And I believe uh, this, I guess I'll talk about price point at the end. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but um, I think that's all for materials. Uh, running on bearings, of course, which adds to the fantastic action. 
And yeah, I don't think that uh, I'm missing anything. One thing I do like to point out is the pivot on here. I really like how he has this like six shooter pivot. It just looks really good. Um, adds a nice kind of personalized touch to it. Really like that, but yeah, so action. Um, you know, very similar to my PE and, uh, you know, a lot of different people's PEs that I've seen. The middle finger flick is just money. It's so good. It's so snappy. The detent is just, you know, so finely tuned for this knife. Uh, QSP really knocked it out of the park. You know, you can do the index flick. You can do the slow roll. The thumb flick you can do. Um, it's not the easiest because of how narrow the hole is. I've talked about that before. When you're doing thumb flicks, it's easier if you have a more rounded hole as opposed to like a pill-shaped hole. Um, but as long as you get used to it and, you know, you just fire it out, it's going to come right out of there. So, but middle finger flick is awesome. Um, the thumb or the uh, front flipper works very well. It's very snappy. Uh, sometimes whenever you have multiple deployment methods, like you have a hole or a front flipper or a, a hole and a flipper, um, sometimes a detent can lack in one of those methods where it excels in the other. But in this case, it's it, it excels in, a, in both of them. The front flipper is great, feels fantastic. You know, and then you have that strong detent for the middle finger flick as well. So, you know, in both, and in both situations, uh, you know, the detent is awesome. It gives it a great action. Very snappy, but, um, you know, I, I do like the front flipper a lot. It just, it's, it adds another uh, fidget factor to it. And it, it, it's great. I mean, all he did is really, so I guess the, fir the first one didn't have any jimping. I'm trying to show you guys. You guys can see that the, the first one had no jimping up top there. Um, so he added jimping and he just, ex uh, you know, extended the, the blade stock by, you know, in, not even a full inch. And that's, that's the result you get. So the action on the middle finger flicks great drops to your thumb you can shake it closed or you can drop it to your thumb and then bang it closed once um, it's very smooth you know qsp has been killing it lately uh, they really do create some great products and you can see the bearings down in there there's probably a little bit of you know gunk and dirt in there because i have uh, this is part of a pass around group and i am you know not the first one to get it so I think they were sending, I think Kevin sent like four of these around because Lefty EDC was kind of the uh, the driving force behind making this group, which is awesome. Kev's been really good at doing that lately for different products and stuff like that. But yeah, very smooth, very drop shutty, very fidget friendly. Just all around, you know, great action. And it's, just, you know, I can say the same on mine. Mine's obviously broken in and doesn't have a front flipper, but very smooth you guys can see it's pretty much the same just feels great so action is awesome uh, next up is ergos and i think this knife fits my hand so well i mean it's, it's a sway back design obviously but you have very minimal swooping back here i mean it's not not bad at all it's very um mild i would say and then the biggest thing, in my opinion, that people didn't like on the original one, and it still, you know, has this right here, or it still has it on this one, of course, but people, I saw some people just didn't like this cutout here and how it felt weird in their grip. Uh, Casey over at Knives Fast, I think, was, he was kind of the one of the ones that stuck out in my mind of one of the ones that didn't like this. But for me, you either choke back here with, you know, you have some jumping up top now for added grip, but you can either put your pointer finger in here and choke back and still get all four fingers on the knife. Uh, it's very comfortable. Or you put your middle finger in the, the groove here and then you choke up on this landing area. And to me, this just, you know, fills my hand. It feels so well, it kind of just sucks it in. Um, if you're doing more precise cuts, if you have to get up and cut some labels or, you know, um, cut something very easily and, you know, it's kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing. It just, it feels great and I really, you know, I think this is a very good ergonomic knife. The The pot clip doesn't stand very proud of the knife at all. Um, you have minimal um, uh, hot spots, in my opinion. Kind of just fills right in the hand. Uh, the blade or the pot clip is uh, countersunk or yeah, countersunk down into the scales, but it does have kind of mushroom top screws. So they kind of did that halfways, in my opinion. But, um, you know, great 
ergos. Uh, you know, if you really squeeze down, it, you can definitely feel some hot spots, but as a whole, uh, I thought this was a great ergonomic knife from the, you know, very first unboxing of my first one. So, um, you know, it's just, and this, the titanium feels good to the touch. Uh, it's, it's kind of a smoother titanium. It doesn't have a, you know, a lot of grip to it, or it does have a grip to it, but it doesn't have a lot of like texturing to it. Uh, so, you know, you, if you have sweaty hands, I haven't carried this like out to work or, you know, outside or anything like that too often. Uh, I've been kind of, you know, when I've carried it, I've gone to like my girlfriend's house, um, around my house, stuff like that. So I don't know if you're going to use this as like a working knife. If, you know, the, the sweatier your, the hands are, I don't know if it'll become kind of slick, but the titanium has a good, you know, feel to it. Um, the edges are all rounded off very nicely. There's no, you know, sharp edges, no hot spots around, you know, the scales or anything like that. So, uh, ergos are great. Next up is carry. Now, like I said, in the very beginning, this is kind of a heavy knife in my opinion. Um, I really would have liked to seen some internal milling going on because that was the first thing that popped in my head. Whenever I brought this knife out of the container, I was like, man, this feels kind of heavy, especially you know, considering the mine has the uh, fat carbon scales, mine's so lightweight. And even when I had the G10, it was still lightweight. Um, so it just, it kind of feels like they just threw like slabs of titanium on here. Um, I just, I think some internal milling would have gone a long way to make the knife a little bit, you know, less heavy and less uh, cumbersome. And, and that's not to say that this thing is like super hard to carry in your pocket and super heavy. And you're really going to be like weighed down when you carry Cause that's not, that's not the, the point of what I'm getting at, but um, it just, it feels that way, uh, it, you know, and there's different moments of like when you're holding it, you're like, okay, this thing is not that heavy, but like other moments, like when, as I drop it on my table, luckily I didn't scratch it, but as I was getting at, when you, like the first time I picked it up, um, I thought it was heavy. So every time I go to pick it up and I flick it, I'm like, man, this thing's kind of heavy. So that's kind of my thought process behind it. Um, but you know carry wise it carries well because it of course it goes to the you know butt end of the knife sits in the pocket real well drops in there you have no you know flipper tab or or any jimping over here to catch your thumb on or your your hand on when you're reaching down at it uh you know as a righty the front flipper is in this pocket and this is only set up for righty carry there's no lefty ability here um which sorry lefties but you cannot carry it lefty um which keeps the again the front flipper jimping in towards the pocket but, you know, other than that, other than being heavy, uh, it carries well, it, you know, it's a decent size, you know, it's not a very big knife, it fits into my hand pretty well. So it's not like you're carrying around some big, you know, monstrosity of a knife, but uh, I just, it, it could have been a little bit lighter in my opinion. So lastly, I want to talk about price point and want to recommend this knife. Guys, I absolutely would recommend this knife. Um, of course, this was a pre-order, so... It kind of sucks because you cannot get a new, you know, you cannot go out and buy one of these right now. I think they're supposed to come in this fall sometime. Um, I'm sure Jacob probably ordered extra ones or he might send some to, I think, Knife Joy uh, had some of the PEs last time. Um, so just follow him on Instagram. I will leave his link, or I will leave his Instagram link down below as well as his website. Uh, if you're interested in this one, I'm sure he'll have some extras or he'll send them or he'll get some sent to a um, retailer. But I would recommend this knife because I have, again, fallen in love with this one. I love my personal one. It's fantastic. And it has only gotten better because, you know, you have the front flipper, you have the, the better um, lock bar access, makes it a little bit easier to get your kind of the corner of your thumb in there. It just drops it right down. You know, it's a cool sway back design. It's good materials. 14C28N is a fantastic steal for the price point that these are at. Um, you're getting a deep carry pot clip. This one, you're getting titanium scales. So... You know, as heavy as they are, and I, as much as I wish they were, you know, uh, internally milled, you're still getting titanium uh, on bearings for killer action. Very fidget friendly. A very usable knife. I, I love a blade shape like this. I can't get it turned around. Um, the Warren Cliff is just so utilitarian, so usable for getting down in and ripping open packages or mail or labels or, um, you know, doing all kinds of EDC tasks. So, these went for $89. I think when they come out, they will be like $10 more because you, you saved a little bit with the pre-order. So I think these will be right around $100. The blue denim micarta ones were I think $60, $59.99. Um, so they might be around 70 when they come out. But again, 
Uh, if you're interested, I will leave a link in the description down below to his website and his Instagram. Please go check him out. Um, I've talked to Jacob a little bit on Instagram. He's a fantastic dude. Uh, he's been on Lefty Live with Kevin uh, once or twice. He, so I've, you know, not directly spoken to him, but heard, heard him talk to Kevin, respond to comments and stuff like that. And he's just a great guy. He is making his customs, uh, which I think he's on a little bit of a lull right now. But he makes his customs out of his basement, I think. He's from Minnesota, I think. Uh, and he's just, he's a great dude who comes out with great products. And he has in the pipeline, I think, a like mini variant, which is like a, a slip joint version of it, I think, with only like one scale, which is kind of interesting looking. And then he also has a, I think it's called the Veritas. It's like a completely new model um, that he's working on getting. I think he has some prototypes coming within the near future, so that's exciting. Um, just he has good things coming down the pipeline. He's a great dude, and uh, I have nothing but good things to say about him. Nothing but good good things to say about his products. Uh, you know, customer service, all those things. He just I'm glad to support Fist Blade Works. Um, I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting one now because you know now that I have the titanium in hand, I probably would have went with the micarta um, if I could go back and order one now. But I might try to get one whenever they come out or see if uh, you know any of my buddies have like. A hand, I think like Corey over at Stafford's EDC told me he has two of the, the pre-orders, a titanium one and a micarta one. So maybe I'll see if I can get a uh, get the micarta one off him or something like that. Um, but yeah, just great knife, great person behind the knife, uh, great design, great materials. Just everything about this is, is awesome. So um, this was my overview slash full review of the Chris Blade Works variant PE2, which is a pre-order knife um, coming soon. Again, check my description for his website and his Instagram down below. If you guys want to know more, uh, you know, know the uh, really in-depth specs and stuff like that, they will be listed on the website and stuff like that. So uh, that's all for today, guys. I uh, really appreciate you watching and listening. And, uh, you know, I've been, I feel like this this video and the uh, Tinker Force video, I've been kind of rambling a lot and I've been kind of, you know, just, just been kind of some weird videos. So hopefully they turn out okay for you guys. Uh, again, I appreciate every single one of you who watches my videos. You guys are like a family now. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.